Um, let me go ahead and talk about these Confederate monuments, these idols to false gods that's coming down. Let me share a video uh, with you. Um, um, a very prominent Confederate statue just came down in Washington, D.C. And let me see if I can pull that video up. Uh, let's see, where is the video? Now I'm not seeing it on here. Let me see. I want to share the screen. Here it is, right here. All right, let's go ahead and share that. This is in Washington, D.C. Uh, this statue of our Albert Pike, I believe it is, has a uh, been torn down in Washington, D.C. and set on fire. So let's give it a look. All right, so that's a video I downloaded from YouTube that shows that. Uh, let me go ahead and stop this. All right, it's just running my videos. I'm really using a new laptop I'm not familiar with. I'm still trying to learn everything. So, yeah, that was Washington, D.C., and I heard that Trump is very, very, very upset about that video. Um, <laughs> I mean, excuse me about that statue coming down. He's very upset. He might even have an aneurysm. We can only hope, right? Um, so for those that's been following uh, my timeline, you know I've been involved uh, with some of the protests and demonstrations here in my county in North Carolina. Um, we have one of those uh, false idols to false gods to the false religion of white supremacy at the courthouse and these things were strategically placed at courthouses to send a message to African Americans, uh, victims of slavery, former victims of slavery, as well as their children. I, I imagine it would be their children in the 19, uh, let me see, 1912 is when that statue went up here in Gaston County. So that could have been, you know, some of the uh, victims of slavery still alive during that time. Uh, that would have been, what, uh, about 40, 50 years later. So it's possible some of them could have still been alive, but definitely their children uh, were alive at that time. And, and they were put up, you know, during the Jim Crow era to send a message about the social order of the day and what was expected. Now, a lot of people think, probably think that uh, African-Americans newly uh, liberated here in the United States were you know, all 40 statues or didn't care, but um, I checked out a video of a couple of North Carolina historians and they were talking about how um, African-Americans were vandalizing those statues back then. I imagine if they got caught though, the penalty would be a lot greater uh, than what people are facing today uh, for pulling down these statues. Um, one of the things I should mention is the concept of jury nullification, because if I get called to a jury, um, let's say I lived in Raleigh where they uh, pulled down two statues and lynch one of them of a Confederate uh, soldier. Um, and let's say those people got charged or whatnot, or anybody gets charged during this uprising, I look at them as political prisoners. And so if I was on a jury, I would uh, engage in jury nullification. I would vote not guilty. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I saw them on that video, but I'm voting not guilty. And jury, jury nullification actually has its roots in slavery during the plantation of uh, slavery period. Um, you know, when you would have people operating the Underground Railroad in some of the states to help 
victims of slavery, escape. Some people would get arrested and they would face a jury trial. Um, I can't recall the law right now. It might have been a violation of the Fugitive Slave Act or something like that. Um, but those juries, especially, you know, if they are in abolitionist states, then um, a lot of times those juries, they will vote not guilty and set the person free or it will be a, a quote unquote hung jury um, where you don't get a conviction. So, uh, of course, the person would go free, but the state would still have the option to uh, bring more charges or, or what have you. So if you end up on one of these juries uh, connected to these protests, uh, charging some of these protesters, just go with jury nullification. Just say not guilty. You ain't even got to explain yourself to the jury foreman. Just tell them I'm voting not guilty. We can sit here all day or all week if you want to. Or, you know, you can just go tell the judge that you got a hung jury, all right? Or you can spend your time trying to convince others of why it's morally right to vote not guilty, regardless of what the law says, you know? Um, so anyway, here in North Carolina at the uh, state capitol, which is Raleigh, um, you had those statues come down. Now the governor, Roy Cooper, has ordered three Confederate monuments from the state capitol grounds. I'm gonna read this article to you from the news at Zerber. It says, Governor Roy Cooper ordered three Confederate monuments removed from the state capitol grounds to protect public safety, he said in a statement. Less than 24 hours after protesters pulled down two bronze soldiers from the 75 foot Confederate monument at the capitol. Uh, the monuments include memorials that have stood at the state capitol for more than a century. The remainder of the North Carolina Confederate Monument, the Monument to the Women of the Confederacy, and the Henry Wyatt Monument. I don't even know who he is. And that's why I say, man, these people talking about, oh, we learn history. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? There's no monuments to Hitler anywhere in the world, but yet we all know who Hitler is and what, what he did. Okay. Um, so Cruz removed the Wyatt Monument and the Women of the Confederacy statue Saturday morning. Now, uh, Cooper said in a statement on Saturday, I am concerned about the dangerous efforts to pull down and carry off large, heavy statues and the strong potential for violent clashes at the site, Cooper said in a statement Saturday afternoon. If the legislator, legislature had repealed their 2015 law that puts up legal roadblocks to removal, we could have avoided the dangerous incidents of last night. And that just reminded me of a quote uh, by a former president, the one that was assassinated, uh, John F. Kennedy. Um, I may not remember the quote, the quote um, verbatim, but it goes something like this. Those who prevent revolution make a peaceful revolution. Yeah, those who prevent peaceful revolution will make violent revolution inedible. So that applies. And so he's taking preemptive action. These uh, monuments are a threat to public safety, to the peace and order of the state. So we're taking them down. And um, so, you know, we're working on getting ours down in um, North Carolina, I mean, in Gaston County, North Carolina. Um, it isn't, it wasn't put up by the state. It isn't owned by the state. It wasn't put up by the county or isn't owned by the county, but it's owned by private parties, which the law says that you can take those down. Uh, the, the states can take those down. Now, related to that, we got the Lieutenant Governor. Um, so I should say Governor Roy Cooper is a Democrat. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest is a Republican. And isn't it interesting how things have flip-flopped? Now, when these statues went up, who were, these people were Democrats that uh, erected Jim Crow, erected all these statues and what have you uh, to these white supremacist slavers. And, and so now today you got Republicans defending the legacy of racist Democrats. Now, they'll use that as a talking point if they think you're stupid enough um, to go for it. But they use that as a talking point by saying, oh, the Republican Party was the party of abolition. Um, we fought a civil war. We put, you know, and but the Democrats were the party of slavery and Jim Crow. But why is it then today that you defending those Democrats' legacy of Jim Crow 
um, via these my, monuments. Very, very interesting. And that all um, kind of ties into what is known as the Southern strategy. Um, it might have started before, uh, what's his name, Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon. Um, it might have been before him, but he was known for running a um, Southern strategy where they were trying to appeal to racist white people in the South. Okay, so that's what's known as the Southern strategy. And now, you know, of course, Richard Nixon was a Republican and they've been courting the racist white vote um, ever since. Um, so yeah, very interesting. So let me read this statement though uh, by Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest. He said, um, no Carolinian should, and he posted this on Facebook, no Carolinian should be shot by the utter lawlessness that occurred in downtown Raleigh once again last night, this time on the state capitol grounds while Governor Roy Cooper shifted blame when our cities were looted and buildings were damaged. He has no excuses this time. Last night, destruction occurred on state property right next to his office. It is clear that Governor Cooper is either incapable of upholding law and order or worse, encouraging his behavior. The essence of a free society is the rule of law. When our elected leaders turn a blind eye to chaos, destruction, and disorder, society begins to unravel. But, you know, think about the irony. He wanted to talk about lawlessness. You know, um, the Ku Klux Klan used to have the largest membership base here in North Carolina than any other state in the so-called uh, United States of, of America. Yes, no, I've seen documentaries about um, you know, their clan membership. I'm talking about those who pay dues and I guess they got a little card. I don't know if it was laminated or not. Um, but yeah, so here you got again a Republican who's defending statues to racist slavers who succeeded from the union because they wanted to keep practicing slavery. And then they started terrorizing black people uh, who had gained the right to vote, uh, actually, uh, they didn't have the voters' rights protection that later came with Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement, but they did have the right to vote, but they started coming up with these poll taxes and then intimidation and terrorism to um, keep Black folks from exercising their rights as citizens to vote in elections. So, and then, you know, with all the terrorism, um, there was uh, Durham, North Carolina, we hear about Black Wall Street. Tulsa was in the news lately. You know, Donald Trump uh, was going to have a rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma on June the 19th, on, on Juneteenth, right? The day that uh, commemorates Juneteenth. And so, you know, uh, Black Wall Street, as it's known um, in Tulsa, where all of these terrorists uh, just destroyed that section of Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Black section, which was... Uh, kind of prosperous. And there were other pockets of successful Black communities. I know some people like to pretend like we had everything we needed. No, that wasn't the condition of most of the Black people, but there were pockets. And there were some of those pockets here in North Carolina, like Durham, and they even burnt down Durham. So um, I, I, I tell you, man, these Republicans are really showing uh, their true colors for those that need it made plain for them. They can't read in between the lines or uh, don't hear those dog whistles or not able to interpret uh, those dog whistles and what have you. So, you know, some people be saying, um, and unfortunately, it's some Black people be talking about, well, what good is taking these monuments down? Well, one of the things is, it's causing people like Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest to expose themselves for the racist um, Confederate sympathizing, um, suspected white supremacists that they are. And so once they identify themselves, then we know that we can vote them out of office. Okay. So I, I think it's a great time to be alive right now, man. I'm really feeding off the energy of, the, of these young people, man. And I'm doing everything I can to support them. All right. So that's all I, I wanted to say again. Um, hopefully this Zoom software that I'm using is going to work a lot better than the other software in terms of, in terms of live streaming. Um, but we want to bring 
more live streaming and some with some of the programs that we have. So I'm just trying to get familiarized with how Zoom works. It's it's uh, kind of self-explanatory, but it's got a whole lot of controls. All right. So as I close this out, remember to support uh, the production of independent black media, support all independent media, but uh, specifically black independent media because we've had our outlets taken from us or swallowed up by white corporations. And then, you know, they'll put some black faces on there, but who's determining what the programming is? It's not those black people. And even if it is a black person, a lot of black people succumb to the whims of suspected racists so they can keep their jobs. So um, please make a donation to our nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. It is tax deductible. You can go to our platform, blacktalkradionetwork.com, or check the video description. That said, peace and blessings to all. Be safe out there, and COVID-19 is real.